Hello everybody and welcome to what is likely going to be the last episode of Vehicles of War Thunder for 2021. In this episode we are going to be returning to Italian aircraft that are available in the game. Because of when I covered the Fiat CR42 back in the day, Italy was not an independent tech tree, they were actually just part of the German tech tree. We have yet to actually cover the Italian reserve aircraft, which is the Fiat CR32. So, that is what we're going to be doing this time around, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the design history for the Fiat CR32. The Fiat CR32 was designed by aeronautical engineer Celestino Rosatelli. The CR32 is in many ways just an improved version of the earlier Fiat CR30, which was also in its own ways just an improvement of earlier aircraft designed by Rosatelli including the CR-1 in 1924 and the CR-20 in 1926. The CR-30 retained the worn and W struts of the older designs, but beyond that was new. Some obvious visual differences include the use of rounded wing tips as opposed to square tips on the older designs, streamlined spats around the undercarriage, and the placement of the engine radiator in a chin position under the engine instead of above the engine as on the CR-1 and CR-20. The CR-30 made its maiden flight on March 5th, 1932, and was faster and more maneuverable than the previous aircraft, the Fiat CR-20. However, not long after work on the CR-30 was completed, Rosatelli began work on an improved version which would become the CR-32. This design would keep many of the design features of the CR-30, with the latest or with the largest differences being that it was smaller in every dimension, with length being reduced from 25 feet and 10 and a quarter inch to 24 feet and 5 and a quarter inch. And a wingspan chain and the wingspan changed from 34 feet and 5 and a half inches to 31 feet and 2 inches. The weight of the CR-32 was also redistributed to improve the maneuverability. This was mostly done by moving the fuel tanks around, uh, which now also included an auxiliary fuel tank located in the center of the upper wing. The prototype CR-32, which, which had the designation MM-201, would make its maiden flight on April 28, 1933, from the Fiat Company airstrip at Turin. The prototype was more maneuverable than the CR-30 and was faster despite using the same engine, a 600 horsepower Fiat A30 RA BIS V12, and similar weight. With a top speed of 223 miles per hour compared to 218 miles per hour. Production on the CR-32 would be ordered in March 1934 and the aircraft would remain in production until 1939 with a total of 1,212 aircraft being produced in Italy across four main variants, along with 100 more built under license in Spain. The structure of the CR-32 was fairly conventional, consisting of a fuselage made up of duralumin tubes covered by light metals toward the front and fabric elsewhere. Ailerons were located in the upper wings, the armament of the CR-32 was also conventional for the time period, consisting of two machine guns mounted in the upper nose decking. Originally, these would be 7.7mm Breda Safat machine guns, however these would later be replaced for 12.7mm Breda Safat guns with 350 rounds per gun. The four main variants of the CR-32 were the base model armed with two upper nose guns. As mentioned previously, these could be either 7.7mm or 12.7mm depending upon when that particular uh, version came off the production line. However, the 12.7mm were the preferred armament and had 383 aircraft built. The replacement of the CR-32 was the CR-32 BIS in 1935. This model could carry an additional two 7.7mm machine guns in the lower wings. The BIS would also introduce the ability to carry 100kg worth of bombs in the form of either one 100kg bomb or two 50kg bombs. This however does not appear to be reflected in game. The engine was also upgraded to the more powerful Fiat A30 RA BIS engine. None of my sources denoted what the horsepower of this new and improved engine was. 
Uh, in game, it does appear to have supercharging, um, or as the game reflects it, web. So that's an improvement for the engine, but I don't know if beyond that if the horsepower actually improved. Um, some field modifications of the BIS would actually remove the 7.7mm guns so as to improve the performance. Because clearly people out in the field, just like me, playing War Thunder, came to the conclusion the 7.7mm just aren't really worth it. Just, it's, it's a crappy, uh, round size. It just doesn't seem to do anything against aircraft. Uh, it's probably okay for strafing infantry, but, you know, there are better ways to deal with infantry than strafing them. Around 328 aircraft of this model were produced. The next model is the CR-32 Tear, which was introduced in 1937 as an improved version of the BIS model and would remove the 7.7mm guns mounted in the wings and modify the undercarriage. Around 100 units of this model would be produced between July and December 1937. This model was also exported to Paraguay, Venezuela, China, Hungary, or China and Hungary. The CR-32 Quater, Quart uh, yeah, sure, Quater, was the final version of the aircraft into production, and it was an improved version of the CR-32 Tear. The only real difference with this model is that the weight was reduced and a radio was, from what I can tell, added as standard issue. Around 337 of this model were built. This model also had an initial, an initial climb rate of 11.16 meters per second. A few prototypes... Uh, before we actually jump into a couple of the prototypes that followed after, this does not seem to be reflected accurately in game. Uh, but again, as I mentioned in the past, it's possible this is a case of using different metrics for determining climb rate. In game, the climb rate for, I believe, all three of the CR-32s that are available in game, which are the base model, the Quater, and the BIS, I believe they are all like 9.6 meters per second. Uh, again, it's possible this is a case of just using different metrics. I'm not 100% certain, but at the very least, looking at this, the uh, Quater should probably have a higher rate of climb unless, you know, there's some reason, like I said, of using different uh, metrics. It's, it's very much possible that, you know, they're using different angles of climbing and that's causing this issue or that's causing this discrepancy. But let's go ahead and get back on track. A few prototype models that were likely test beds for the CR-42 were also made. This include the CR-40, which was powered by a Bristol Mercury 4 radial engine. There are a couple of other, other prototypes, but no real details provided, um, and certainly no um, sources provided for those, so I didn't bother mentioning them. Despite production of the CR-32 ending before the outbreak of World War II in 1939, the CR-32 would see service in both Europe and North Africa. The first time the CR-32 saw action was in Spain during the Spanish Civil War on the side of Nationalist Spain. At least 380 CR-32s would take part in combat over Spain, being a formidable adversary to the Soviet Polyparkov I-15 and I-16. The CR-32 would first arrive in Spain on August 18th, 1936, and three days later, and I'm going to butcher this, Tenente Vittorino Cicerelli, like I said, I'm going to butcher that, uh, would shoot down the first enemy aircraft, a Newport 52 over Cordoba. During the conflict, one CR-32 was supposedly captured by Republican forces and shipped to the Soviet Union for a detailed evaluation. Throughout the entire conflict, the CR-32 would claim to shoot down 60 aircraft, though only 48 are confirmed, according to my sources. Um, Soviet 
Tupolev SB bombers. Uh, they would claim to shoot down 242 I-15s and 240 I-16s, plus 100 of various other aircraft that are unconfirmed. In exchange for this, only 73 CR-32 uh, losses were reported, though some sources claim 175 were lost, 42 being Spanish and 132 being Italian, with 99 of those losses having been shot down, thus combat losses. With 26 of, the, of that 99 being Spanish and 73 of, the, of that 99 being Italian. During the Second World War, the CR-32 would see service in North Africa, East Africa, and the Mediterranean. When Italy declared war on Britain and France on June 10, 1940, only 36 CR-32s and 51 CR-42s made up the operational fighter force of the Regina Aeronautica in Libya. The first combat between a CR-32 and a British aircraft would take place the next day on June 11th when six CR-32s intercepted a formation of Bristol Blenheims, uh, eh, Bristol Blenheim bombers, attacking the airfield at El Adem. The Italian fighters would claim two Blenheims shot down, with the remaining four damaged. British reports, however, claim that two were shot down and two were damaged, with the Italians taking no losses. However, because by this time the CR-32 was largely obsolete during its service in North Africa, the CR-32 would typically be used to strafe ground targets, as opposed to its slated role of interception. During its service in East Africa, the CR-32 would be able to claim its greatest wartime successes. The Fiat would see its first combat in this theater on June 17, 1936, when CR-32s of the 411 Squadriglia, butchered that, basically 411th Squadron, uh, would attack three South African Air Force Junker Ju-86 bombers headed for Yavelo. These bombers were escorted by two Hurricanes of the 1st South African Air Force Squadron. The Fiat's shot down one Ju-86 before engaging the Hurricanes, shooting one down. On July 7, 1936, three CR-32s would escort three Cabroni SA, or excuse me, CA-133s that were intercepted by three Hawker uh, Hartebests. Hartebests? I'm really not sure uh, how it's pronounced. This was a ground support variant of the Hawker Hart, uh, largely used by the South African Air Force. And they would manage to shoot down one of these Hawker Hart variants. However, due to difficulty obtaining replacement parts and spare parts, the number of CR-32s in this theater would gradually thin from 22 on January 10th, 1941, to 14 on January 31st, to 10 on February 11th, and to just 8 on March 5th. The last CR-32 during this, uh, in this theater, would last until mid-April 1941. The CR-32 would also see some service in the Mediterranean, with 23 seeing action during the first weeks of the Greek campaign after the attack began on October 28, 1940. Eight more based in rows would also take part during the invasion of Crete. However, due to poor logistics for fuel, ammunition, and spare parts, many ground crews would have to improvise to allow CR-32s to actually be capable of flying. As a result, their performance would be hampered, and CR-32s just really didn't see a whole hell of a lot of action. But hey, they saw more than the Hawker Fury. The CR-32 would also see action under nationalist China, Austria, Hungary, Venezuela, and Paraguay. China was the first international operator of the CR-32, having ordered either 16 or 24. Sources differ on the exact number, but... The numbers I see commonly pop up are either 16 or 24. Uh, and these would be of the first series of the aircraft in 1933. The model used by the Chinese was equipped with Vickers 7.7mm machine guns, 
officers in the Chinese high command, however, disliked the Fiat CR-32. Pilots, on the other hand, liked it because it proved superior to the American Curtis Hawk and the Boeing P-26 in competitive tests, or in comparative tests. However, due to difficulty importing alcohol and benzol to mix with petrol for the engine, the decision was made not to order any more. By May 1936, only six CR-32s used by China were still operational. In August 1937, the few remaining CR-32s saw some initial success against the invading Japanese forces. In spring 1936, Austria ordered 45 CR-32s to equip two of their Air Force squadrons, or excuse me, to equip part of their Air Force. 36 of these would later, however, be handed over to Hungary following the Anschluss. During 1935 and 1936, the Royal Hungarian Air Force would acquire a total of 76 CR-32s. In Hungarian service, the CR-32 would see its first action in 1939 during a short conflict during the Slovak-Hungarian War. The CR-32s were able to quickly gain air superiority over the Slovak Air Force, which lost a few Avia B-534s and Latov S-328s. When Hungary declared war on the Soviet Union in June 1941, the CR-32 equipped two of the units that supported the Hungarian army on the Eastern Front. The first aerial combat over Hungary during this conflict took place when Tupolev SB-2 bombers attacked the railway station at Sasap. I definitely butchered that. Uh, this would be modern-day CHOP in Ukraine. And again, I probably mispronounced that because it's probably not actually pronounced chop as in to chop meat. Uh, we're intercepted by Fiat CR-32s that managed to successfully shoot down three of the bombers while taking no losses. Following the acquisition of more modern aircraft such as the Fiat CR-42 and the Reggiani RE-2000, the CR-32 would be relegated to use as a training aircraft in the Hungarian military. Now let's go ahead and talk about how the vehicle actually handles in game and I actually forgot to write this part on the script so yeah that's gonna be fun um it's not that big of a deal though so the CR32 despite in game being labeled as with a climb rate of 9.6 meters a second or something to that effect for all three variants it's actually still pretty good it really is um, it's still capable of climbing to a reasonable degree. However, one thing I do want to note is that it and many other Italian aircraft, at least from what I see, look to have fairly underpowered engines because a lot of them, in game at least, have numbers around like 10, 11 meters a second of climb rates. And other countries at those battle ratings particularly when you get out of the reserve, you know, especially when you get above like a 2.0 battle rating. A lot of other countries have aircraft with quite a bit better of stated climb rates. So this looks like it's an issue that we're going to probably end up needing, that's sort of going to get brought up numerous times uh, with Italian aircraft. At least in the case of the CR-32 though, even though it technically has a fairly low climb rate compared to its contemporaries, namely looking at the other reserve aircraft in the game, as many of them tend to be like at least 10, and I think most of them are actually at at least an 11 meters a second. So technically stated wise, at least the CR-32 is lower. At lower battle ratings, people don't climb as much. This is an issue throughout the entire game, but especially at low tiers, people don't tend to climb as much, so it doesn't really hurt you nearly as badly as it would otherwise. The 12.7mm um, machine guns that you have mounted in your nose are brilliant when you get off the stock belt. The stock belt is kind of crappy. Uh, granted, it's been ages since I used the stock belt on the CR-32, so I'm actually recalling from using later aircraft that have the exact same guns. Um, where I don't currently... 
where I didn't have um God, I was playing one I was playing one of the RE two thousands. I don't recall which one it was. Um I hadn't actually played it at all previously, so it was fully stock. I still had this the default belts. Yeah, the default belts are crap with the Italian twelve point seven millimeters. They really are. They just don't seem to have that oomph to actually kill stuff in a timely manner. However, their air targets belt. Oh, that is a godsend. Because it has a uh, what is it? An HEI round? If memory serves me correctly? It has some sort of like high explosive round. Either way, that thing when you, when you have that round will absolutely murder things. So long as you connect. Because it's not like the Italian, or excuse me, the German, what is it? Uh, God, I'm going to butcher it, but it's the, uh, it's the explosive shell that a lot of the sort of mid and late uh, BF-109s and Focke-Wolf 190s have in the uh, German tree. Um, I can't, I, I can't recall what it's called, and I know I would butcher it if I even attempted to pronounce it. Um, but yeah, that round, that is very deadly, even if you don't necessarily directly hit your target. Here with the Italians, you still need to get a direct hit with your, um, guns, but they hurt. They really do hurt when they, uh, connect. Your main issue becomes, as you get up in battle ratings, they potentially kind of suck. Um, but the vehicle we're talking about here is a reserve aircraft, or if you buy the BIS, uh, which you can buy on the marketplace. When I bought mine a while back when I was getting ready to go and do this, uh, series, it was kind of, or this particular video, uh, it was fairly cheap. I don't recall what it was, but it was really freaking cheap. So I said, screw it, I'll buy it. Because it, it is another variant in the game, and I try to be able to maximize the, uh, testing. I want to be able to test all the variants of aircraft that are in the game when I go to talk about them for this series, which is also one of the reasons why it's great if you support the channel uh, via Patreon or something else, uh, because it allows me to be able to do that, particularly for vehicles that have very expensive marketplace uh, variants or um, have a premium variant that you just buy with Golden Eagles or as part of some sort of pack that you can buy on Gaijin's uh, normal store. But Back to the topic at hand. Uh, yeah, the... At this battle rating, at least. These 12.7mm guns are very deadly. Especially when you get the air targets belt. Because the air target... When you connect with that high explosive round... Is going to rip... Wings, it's gonna blow holes in the... Uh, fuselage, it's gonna... Pilot snipe people, all that jazz. So... The, these are actually really freaking good guns. They really are. Uh, you have 700 rounds total in the CR-32. So, I want to say, and I don't have the gameplay in front of me, but without ever returning to the airfield, you can probably nab yourself at least three kills when you have the air targets belt. And assuming you know how to aim, of course. Obviously, if you suck at aiming, you may not be able to do it. Um, or at least you may struggle to get three. But generally speaking, when you get it, once you get a feel for how the guns handle, and if you use the air target spelt, or I guess even the stealth belt also works, because it also includes that high explosive round, uh, you are likely going to just destroy a lot of the enemies you hit with fairly short bursts. Um, so, like I said, you can probably nab yourself like at least three kills without too much of a hassle um, with these guns. They, they are really nice guns for a reserve. Um, but going by what the wiki says, around rank three they sort of start to suck. Um, but I haven't really played rank three Italian, so I don't really know how true that is. And it's not particularly relevant to this video in particular. Um, you 
have a fairly decent um, acceleration when leveled. If you get up tiered at all, however, a lot of enemies will be able to outdive you without too much trouble. So that's going to be an issue you're going to run into, uh, particularly when you're playing around a time where not a whole lot of new players are uh, joining in. If you're playing during a time of day in which you're dealing with a lot of people who are at least a little ways through the tech trees, or people who are all the way through the tech trees were returning to early tier because, you know, this, you know how the saying goes, low tier, fun tier, which I don't think is fully accurate, Thanks. but that's personal opinion on that. But yeah, so you will potentially struggle to dive on certain enemies if they try to dive away from you. Um, so you, you need to particularly learn when to give up the chase because it's not worth bleeding all of your altitude just to kill one guy. It just really isn't, especially if the rest of the enemy team is still up high. Again, this is low tier though, so you probably don't have to worry about that too much because people don't tend to climb at this battle rating in uh, particular. Uh, but yeah, so that is going to, I think, be it for this video. Uh, there really isn't much else to say. Uh, the vehicle turns like a dream. It climbs acceptably for this battle rating, especially because, like I said, people don't tend to climb at this battle rating. So even though you have a fairly lackluster climb rate, it should still be good enough to be able to um, get to where you need to be with most of the enemies you're going to encounter. Uh, you have acceptable guns, especially once you get off of these stock belts. And the only real downside, like I said, is that in any in up tiers, particularly awesome. full up tiers or I guess three quarters full up tiers as well, potentially, um, a lot of enemies can outdive you often. So you're just going to have to, like I said, learn to avoid uh, giving up all your altitude to try and chase one guy down to the deck and then proceed to not be able to climb up um, further on to deal with the rest of the enemy team. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, so... <clears throat> quick reminder that I do have a Discord, which is my go-to place for posting about what's going on with the channel. So I do highly recommend that you join that. You can find a link to it down below in the description. Down there you will also be able to find a link to my Patreon as well as a Streamlabs donation link. If you find yourself enjoying this series, those are the two main ways to help support the channel. The Patreon comes with some goodies, such as early access to videos if you choose to go that route. However, Patreon does take a 5% cut of whatever it is that you give, if memory serves me correctly. Um, as a result, the channel is actually helped a lot more if you help, if you support the channel via Streamlabs, which for a number of months now has had an option to be able to do um, monthly donations. This was obviously meant as a um, competitor to Twitch's subscriptions, or to Twitch subscribers. Um, Streamlabs implemented their own sort of feature. Uh, and so, yeah, that... If you really don't care about getting early access to videos and you just want to maximize support to the channel, use Streamlabs because it helps the channel out a lot more. Because um, the channel basically gets 100% of whatever you give via Streamlabs. Because Streamlabs themselves doesn't take a cut. And I don't think any of the um, payment processors that you would potentially go through um, with the way I have it set up uh, would actually have a fee. So, like I said, the channel would get basically 100%, if not 100%. But it's up to you which method you want to use to support the channel if you want to go ahead and... Um, support it. Like I said, you can find links to all that stuff down below in the description. As for what we will be covering next time, like which will probably be during after the new year, because like I said, this will probably be the last uh, Vehicles of War Thunder for 2021. 
Uh, we are actually going to be returning to uh, Japanese aircraft to cover the Nakajima Ki-27, or Ki-27 technically, I guess, is more accurate. Um, but yeah, so I will see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.